Detonator charged. Hi, Luthi. Hi, how's it going? It's going good. Yeah. I, I, actually, I actually wanted to ask you here in the beginning. I know we're both Scandinavian, but I'm Danish and my Swedish isn't that amazing. I hope it's is it okay if we do this in English. Yeah, my Danish is not great either. So let's do it in oh. English. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. The interesting thing to me about this film is it's very much about, you know, J. Robert Oppenheimer is very much a walking, talking enigma. Nobody knows what you believe. Do you? And part of the appeal of this movie, part of the journey is trying to peel off some of the layers of him and discovering what's underneath. Yeah. And I guess as a composer, in terms of music, you can easily fall into that trap of being too clear in telling the audience how to feel about an event or about mm. a person. So I wondered if you gave any thought to musically trying to, you know, dance around Oppenheimer, you know, complimenting his mystique and his character, not deconstructing it musically. No, that's that's a good question. I mean, obviously, I never read anything like it. When you you're really in his world, you're like it's it's written as a first person. So so everything is you're kind of breathing. You're seeing everything from his point of view, and that was what I realized pretty early on that that was that's what the score needed to do. You needed the audience. You needed to help the audience feel what he's feeling instead of judging him from what he's done. You are the man who gave them the power to destroy themselves. And the world is not prepared. And he's such an interesting, complex, you know, character. You know, he, there, there's a lot going on inside, and that was the challenge. Like, how do we, how do we fill that whole spectrum of music, and how do we make it, at times, you know, like, you know, you see, you're also seeing his inner dreams and visions that he has, and you know, of, of Adam spinning around. You know, you can see this if you see in a theater, like you see it on a big screen, these visuals that, that you never experienced before. It's, it's, and, and that was extremely inspired for me. And that's what I wanted the music to sound like. Another thing that I found was really interesting about the music is that it's very much a film dealing very much with science, with mathematics, with machinery, with war. I mean, mm -hmm. all these things that you'd ordinarily describe as pretty cold and heartless. And yet, mm -hmm. to me, it was very much a very warm, very organic score mm -hmm. as well. Of course, there is a lot of electronic elements to it, but there's also very much the use of the orchestra, especially with the violin. Yeah. Yeah, that's what. That's where uh, Chris wanted the, the the music to start from. He was his first idea was like, why, why I want to explore where we can bring the sound of the violin, especially uh, he wanted that to portray Oppenheimer because you know it's a fretless instrument, and depending on the performance of the violin, you can go from you know a very very soft romantic tone to if you increase the vibrato or just the pitch a little bit, you can go into like a neurotic manic state. And then you can add four players, you can add eight players, you can add a whole orchestra on top of it. So you, you can really have like those peaks of dynamics, you know. Sometimes the movie is extremely intimate. You see it just a close up of his face, you know. And sometimes it goes bigger than biggest, you know. And, and, and I think those dynamics changes and shifts in, in music and movies, you know, it's, it's very f refreshing to see. Um, and to be able to work in that was, was, a, was a real pleasure. And also, I love your work on Tenet, of course, uh, yeah. also with, with, with Nolan. And of course, he's had two very much fruitful, you know, many years long collaborations, you know, before that with two different composers, of course, with David Julian yeah. in the beginning, and then also with Hans Zimmer for many years. And I wondered if it was a challenge for you to kickstart this creative collaboration with, with Nolan after he'd already had such a shorthand and sort of musical, you know, vocabulary with these two other composers beforehand. For me, I, it was just inspiring, you know, I, I because I've loved what they did. I loved his collaboration with Dave Julian. I obviously love everything he did with Zimmer. Is something that it also has been, you know, inspiring me for a long time in my career. Where when I got started, like seeing those and hearing that movie and hearing those sounds, and and so for me, it was just kind of inspiring to to enter that world and see, you know, because also it's very obvious how much attention he puts to the music. The music is always like a character in his movies, 
and to be a part of that exploration and, and see where he takes things and how he pushes everything forward was it was it was just inspiring to me. And there were a couple of beautiful musical moments I'd love to touch upon yeah. in the film. And one of them that I felt was really interesting was immediately after the bomb. I mean, because that's such an ambiguous moment uh, in, in terms of the fact that, of course, it's it's sort of a victory for many of these characters that we followed during the movie. It's, it's you know, for the scientists and the military, they've achieved their goal. But at the same time, it's sort of a sad moment for, you know, the world at large in terms yes. of history. So tonally, what sort of thoughts did you have about that particular music moment? Well, that's 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 such an incredible turn in the movie. You know, he's, at, you know, up until that point, he's in full control of everything. He is he's in charge. He's in demand. He's telling people what to do. And then as soon as the, they, they make the bomb, they take it away from him. And he realizes there's no need for me anymore. And so that's why I wanted this, the, the, this, this kind of eerie, beautiful, slow kind of uh, string piece um, tell that story, what is, what's going on with him. And also, I think one of the things I really loved about it also was the fact that it authentically portrays how the sound of the bomb, of course, comes much later because of the distance as well. So very much, you know, your music is very much there to characterize, the, yeah. you know, the moment as well, you know, audially, tonally as, as well. That it, Was that a sort of a pressure for you at that big moment in, in this story, in this film? Uh yeah, yeah, I knew that that we needed to have a piece of music that could just build for a long time. Didn't need a charge. But I also had a sense that that you know the the importance of the silence there is more important than the music. And, and I feel like that part was, was already in Chris's mind while he was writing the movie. He knew he wanted silence there. And also that, that silence also makes that feel even longer. It makes it feel even longer. And, and it's, I, I think it's very successful. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't know if you get that same feeling when you worked on it, but but sitting there in the cinema, that was such a tenseful moment. Yeah. Because I was just waiting for the explosion yeah. to hit me in the seat, and just every second, just felt it felt like a, a horror movie almost <laughs> at that at that moment. Um, there's another moment I love where they're sort of unpacking the bomb and sort of mounting it, and that's where I felt that the score ventured a little bit more into ele an electronic space. Yeah, there was sort of a little metallic clanging. There was yeah. just like a faint feeling of a. Of a Geica counter almost and the electronic yeah. sounds almost a little hint of Terminator ish feel about it. What were yes. your thoughts and and that scene? Uh, that 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 was a, that was such a it's such a special moment in the movie. Everything up to that point has been like you know almost like a like a play you know there. But this is now the time where it's like okay this is this is not just theory anymore. This is an actual physic thing you know so it's a bomb and and we're now touching it with our hands we're not just calculating scribbling down notes anymore um and i wanted that gravitas to feel in the music and 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 also maybe not feel it through music but through sound and i think that's also one one of the interesting things like i, I was trying to find i was just making a sound world i had three elements that, that kind of reminded me of what whatever a bomb would sound like or feel like to me. So it's three it's three elements. It's one really low like bass rumbling thing that goes on and it's something that kind of scratches and sounds like nuclear reaction. And one little ticking like metallic sound. And those three elements goes in three different rhythmical um, uh, um, metric modulation ideas. So, so it, it's it's definitely wanted to build that suspense that you see on the screen.
Truman needs to know what's next. Two. What's next? One. Ludvig, tusen tak. It's yeah. been a pleasure. Thank you so much for this amazing music. Looking forward to hearing uh, what you do next. Oh, thanks, Thank you. Thanks so much. It was cool to talk to you. Yeah, it was so good. Hi. Hey, hey. <laughs>